What's cracking, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Burger Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing Astroneer. Now, I don't want to waste your time, so let's get straight to the point. Overall, I give Astroneer four burgers out of five. So what is the genre? How would I describe the game and its genre? Well, Astroneer is kind of a hodgepodge of things. It definitely has elements of space exploration. In fact, that's probably the strongest element that you're going to see here. There are bits of crafting, actually a lot of crafting. Recently, they added some automation that makes the crafting even easier, if not more interesting and <laughs> more complex. There's a large sandbox element to it. You can do a lot of whatever you want here. And of course, at its core, it is definitely a bit of a survival game. So do keep that in mind. You can definitely die, you can lose your stuff, and you can go on a corpse run. Now, it's not as bad as, like, say, Valheim or something like that, but it's definitely there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some general categories that could kind of apply to, you know, pretty much any game in general. And then we're going to talk about more title or genre-specific categories. Let's start with gameplay. Overall, I'm going to give Astroneer's gameplay a 4, 4 burgers out of 5. Astroneer feels fun and rewarding. It's got a good sense of progression, and it's amazingly well done in the sense of mystery and discovery aspects. And we got my dog here biting herself in the background, so we can enjoy that while I'm talking about this. Now, as I mentioned, it can be a little bit aggravating at times. It can be slightly grindy, but it's not nearly as bad as some of the other games in the genre um, when it comes to grindiness and when it comes to aggravation from dying and losing your stuff and having to go back and rebuild it. This isn't, you know, Rust or Last Oasis or Ark or anything in the sense of a survival game. A little bit closer to kind of Valheim. Next, I want to talk about Astroneer's difficulty and learning curve. So I give the implementation of the difficulty and the learning curve three burgers out of five. Now when I talk about this, I don't mean like a one is the easiest in terms of difficulty and a five is the hardest. I kind of mean more like how did they implement these aspects into the game? Did they do a very good job of it or was it poorly done? And I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I think it's kind of a middle ground. Astroneer feels like it can be slightly difficult at times. It's got a pretty big learning curve at the very beginning but it's quick to get over this curve and trust me, be patient because it's worth it. You got to deal with some things early on. Like for example, the biggest thing in this game is oxygen. Now, my girlfriend here and I have these little portable oxygenators, which give us oxygen at all times. So I can run around with that on and I'm fine. I'm not going to suffocate at all, but we're in the really late game. Early on, you have to learn how to run around with these tethers. And that is the only source of oxygen, unless you're building a base or, you know, bringing oxygen chanks. There's other kind of smaller earlier game options, but this is kind of your main way of doing it. So learning to stay tethered at all times to give yourself oxygen, as well as learning kind of the gravity mechanics and the overall physics mechanics and fall damage and all those things, it can be a little bit difficult at first, but once you get over it, like I said, it's an awesome game and it's well worth it. So I feel like they could have implemented that a little bit better. The tutorial felt a little bit sloppy. We had a little bit of trouble with it. But once we got through it and we figured the game out, it was awesome. So as I mentioned, it's not too difficult later in the game, but always have a plan B because as I mentioned, it is a survival game. So you definitely can lose all your stuff. Plans can go awry. So you want to have a backup. You want to have a way to get to your stuff and maybe some backup resources if you figure out, oh, well, I pretty much can't find it or can't get it. So it's gone forever. That is definitely there. So overall, I give the implementation of the difficulty in the learning curve three burgers out of five. The next category that I want to cover for this game is replayability. Now, I give Astroneer's replayability value four burgers out of five. There's some pretty cool stuff that you can do in the late game. So we're going to take a look at one of those things right now. We're going to go ahead and hop into this flying machine and spoiler alert, this is something that you get late in the game. But yeah, just a heads up, there's a lot of things that you can do here. So let me make sure I know which way we're flying. We're flying to our little outpost over here. There we go. You could probably clear the main story in about 50 hours, you know, or you could probably speed run it in half an hour if that's your thing, but that's up to you. There's a ton of automation. There's a lot of crafting. There's a lot of exploration, all kinds of things to keep you busy um, for probably hundreds of hours afterwards. Personally, I probably won't put that many in, but I could see how others do. And I've, I've heard of quite a few people that have put, you know, 500,000 hours into this thing. And I can see why. There's a lot of creative options. There's a definitely a very big, vast, uh, creative landscape for you to work with. It does feel like you kind of hit a soft wall after you complete all the quests. That's why I don't really give it a 5 out of 5. So we can see here there is a mission log. And 
as you complete these quests, we'll go to some of the earlier ones, you get various rewards. So battery backup, fully charged battery, you get a schematic to unlock the splitter, and you get some extenders as a reward. So there is that really nice sense of progression when you're going through the main game for the first time. But as far as replayability goes, you kind of hit a soft wall once you complete all of those. And that's where we're at now. And that being said, it might just be a matter of needing to change the way that you play into a more creative way, which is what we're starting to do now. We're building, like, for example, this Hydrazine outpost here, which is fully automated. And this is something that took us, you know, maybe an hour or two altogether to craft and bring everything over and set it up properly. So that's some replay value in its own right there. So we got this little driller thing, auto extractor, pumping out ammonium, and then a little grabby arm, a little inserter, like from Factorio, putting the ammonium over here. And then we've got this uh, atmospheric condenser, which is creating hydrogen. And the hydrogen then mixes with the ammonium in this chemistry lab, and it turns into hydrazine, and all the hydrazine goes into this soil and fluid canister. We've got a giant windmill here, and we have a solar panel here, and this is a fully automated, self-reliant outpost that powers itself and nothing else. And like I said, it took us some time to set this all up. So there's absolutely a good amount of replayability there. Um, but as I mentioned, due to hitting that kind of soft wall, I'm not giving it a 5 out of 5. So overall, Astroneer's replayability gets a 4 burgers out of 5 for me. The next category that I want to touch up on for Astroneer is visuals. Astroneer gets an absolute 5 burgers out of 5 for me when it comes to visuals. Astroneer is visually stunning in a simplistic voxel art style kind of way. This may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's an easy 5 out of 5 from me. So the graphics aren't AAA quality, they're more kind of cartoony, but the particle effects are well done and satisfying, and it just looks really nice for what it is. Um, my girlfriend made this garden here, and it's just great. We got a bunch of different plants from the different planets. Some of them are friendly variants, and some of them are not so friendly. For example, one of these guys might, yeah, he'll get mad if I get too close. Uh, let's give it a try, what happens? Oh, he shoots me away! Oh, goodness. But look, luckily I have my jetpack. And I mean, look at that nice little particle effect. For what it is, for like a voxel art kind of style game, it looks pretty solid. I'm really happy with it. So like I mentioned, 5 out of 5 for me. Now just showing off the visuals, I mean just look at this sky, like the sky is really nice. The night sky is a little bit more flattering honestly, so we'll make sure that we get a pan of that at some point. But I mean that's just really nice. And you can fly to other planets, and the orbit system looks really nice. The galaxy, the solar system, all of it is really pretty. And we'll go ahead and check out one of those planets right now. So we can go ahead and launch to another planet. Right now we are on Novus, and we decided to just kind of make our home base here. We just decided we liked it, and we're going to home base there and move most of our stuff there. You can see there's about seven different planets total. Now let's take a look at Glacio. Where's Glacio? I think it was back here. Yeah, there it is. Now Glacio is kind of the ice planet, and all the different planets have different themes. They're kind of diff like different biomes. Um, and there's like a deserty one, and there's all kinds of more like alien-like ones. So this is one that we really like, and I just want to show it to you guys briefly, just as kind of a change of pace, because we had that kind of purple and pink themed planet. Uh, over here, it's completely different. Now this, obviously, this is just a little outpost that we made. It's not nearly as big and complex as our main base, but that's besides the point. You can see here, we've landed in a crater, and it's like kind of red soil, but then if you go up here, pretty much all the entire rest of the planet is all snowy and icy. And it's just, it looks so nice. It, there's so much atmosphere here through the audio, through the visuals. It's very satisfying if you're into this kind of thing. Now, once again, if you're looking for like AAA style graphics and something that looks absolutely beautiful, you know, you're not going to find like Horizon Zero Dawn level, um, you know, facial structures here. It's, it's kind of cartoony. It's kind of a voxel style. In fact, it is a voxel style. So that's what you get. But for what it's worth and for what it is, I think it's pretty flawless. I think it's visually stunning. So Astroneer's visuals get an easy five burgers out of five for me. Next, I'd like to talk about Astroneer's UI. Astroneer's UI gets a three out of five from me. Wait, what UI? Astroneer has its own unique UI. Basically, everything is interacted with in a kind of physical way, quotes on physical, 
in a way that allows you to use and move and read things without any sort of a classic UI on your screen at any or really at all times. So you see there's no health bar here. There's no real oxygen bar other than this stuff on my backpack. All the inventory stuff is actual little things in your backpack. See this little beacon here? This little RTG here? I just put them on the ground. I pick them up. They're moving around with my mouse. I physically place them in my backpack. Again, obviously it's a game, so it's not literally physical, but I'm putting quotes on physical. I actually really like it. I think it's kind of cool and innovative, and, and I really see what they were trying to go for here. I think that they were trying to go for something completely original, and I think that they actually executed it pretty well. But this doesn't really work for everybody, and I've heard that it's an absolute deal breaker for some people. I had a friend that was like, how do you stand the UI in that game? And for me, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just fine. But it is, it is unique. It is different. It can be frustrating. Everything takes up a specific slot. You only have, you know, like eight slots on your backpack and then the two up here and then three on your gun. And a lot of those need to be filled with things. Like you want to have a light on you at all times. You want to have later in the game, you want to have your oxygenator and some power sources and your jetpack on you at all times. You want your hoverboard too. You probably want a beacon in case you die and, and you lose your corpse because you die again on your way to get your corpse. You want your corpse to be marked. All kinds of stuff. You want a soil canister for soil so that you can build bridges wherever you go. So the UI can be a little off-putting for some people, but for me, I actually kind of liked it. I just, I couldn't rate it higher than an average 3 out of 5 because it was not working for some people. And because it's so original and unique in a way that it, it just can be kind of hard to deal with at times. Like I said, admittedly, even though I do like it, can get really frustrating at times, especially when you're trying to move smaller objects, like certain small things in groups of large things. So, oh, what am I, I'm doing a dance here. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, for example, if, if we take a look at um, these items here, like if I'm trying to get that, let's say I'm, I'm way over here and I'm trying to get that one ammonium, that one quartz, you can already see it's really easy for me. I'm accidentally hovering over the copper. I picked up the copper. Oh, I want to put the copper away. I accidentally put it in the wrong spot. Uh, I want to get the quartz. Um, I accidentally picked up the whole storage thing. Like, this can get frustrating. And it can be a deal breaker for some people. But you really just need to be patient with it. You need to take your time to make sure that you can see exactly where you're putting things. And it, it takes some getting used to, but that's just part of the challenge of the game. And it's pretty fascinating. It's pretty original. It's pretty unique. I really like it. And it adds to the atmosphere and the visuals of the game. Because, hey, I said I was going to give you a night sky pan, right? Here's kind of a half and half. Uh, you don't have anything blocking that. There's no health bar. There's no, you know, inventory in your way. There's no tips popping up in your way. Now, there's no map, but you do have this compass. And the compass, it takes some getting used to, but it gets the job done just kind of like a map. It gets you going at least in the directions that you need to go. Not quite the same as the map, but it's, it's kind of your directional tool. There is the catalog. If we go down here, and there definitely is a part here that you can see that we can read things and we can scroll through things. So there, I mean, it's not completely lack and void of UI, you know, there's a kind of a UI within the thing here. But even then, this is like a specific thing I take off of my backpack. See, I take my backpack out and I can click on that and it pulls out the research log. And then my character just puts it right back to his or her backpack right there. So overall, I give the UI of Astroneer three burgers out of five. The next thing that I'd like to cover for Astroneer is the controls. So the controls for Astroneer get three burgers out of five from me. Now, the game has good enough controls, it'll feel familiar for any gamer. Uh, I can't really speak too much for console, but on PC you use the classic W, A, S, D configuration of your character, and you use the mouse to move the camera and the cursor. It does feel a little bit clunky at times, and this kind of is intertwined with what I mentioned about the UI, and I do have a few complaints about it, but I'll touch up on that in another category later. So most of the issues, as I mentioned, are, are intertwined with the original UI. Like I said, it can be hard to move things specifically where you want. Another issue is that, now I don't want to blame you console players, because I'm personally a PC preferer myself, but because it's a cross-platform game, consoles tend to have more limited controls in the sense of there's less buttons and less combinations of buttons for you to press. So what I'm getting at here is the interact key for this game is F. It's F to examine. It's F to close. It's F to lock. It's F to unlock. It is F to turn on. 
it's F to turn off. Sometimes it's hold F to turn on, sometimes it's hold F to turn off. If you were making a game specifically for PC, look at like World of Warcraft, for example. If you've ever seen any WoW player's interface, they got like 50 different abilities with 50 different hotkeys set. You can't quite do that in a console game. So because of that, the controls can feel a little clunky. And I'm not saying that this would be any better if it wasn't made for console as well, but they might have gone with a different system if it was specifically for, for PC. When you're playing a console port, you can feel it. You can tell the game was made for console. If you've ever played, for example, I've been playing Monster Hunter World a lot recently. If you've ever played that, there's certain parts of the game where you can feel that it was made for a console when it comes to UI, when it comes to controls and stuff like that. So games that are designed for both are going to run into some of these issues, right? So what I'm getting at here mostly is using the same hotkey for multiple things. F is used as an interact key for everything. The jump key, for example, is space. The hoverboard key is double space. But the jetpack key is hold space. Thanks. Thanks for that, Bonnie. Now, you can see what I'm getting at here. It can be a little bit frustrating because you can be trying to like hoverboard and oh, I accidentally used my jetpack. Or you can try to be like, oh, I, I just want to, for example, jump up this steep slope here, and I don't want to use my my um, fuel. And then you're, you're spamming your jump key, but then you're getting out your hoverboard and your jetpacking and all kinds of stuff at the same time. So that's why I give the controls for Astroneer a kind of middle ground, three burgers out of five. Talk about controls, man. I accidentally just launched my rocket back into orbit here instead of getting out. But hey, that's my own fault for hitting V instead of F. Next thing I want to touch up on for Astroneer is the audio. Astroneer gets a solid 5 out of 5 when it comes to audio for me. Now, I want to turn the music up for you at some point, but we'll try to find when we're getting a better song here. It's one of those games that it just has an absolutely perfect soundtrack. It melds with and adds to the game flawlessly. It's a bit new agey, so it's not everybody's cup of tea, but you know, for me, I kind of really liked it. Uh, the sound effects are really well done. They match their sources perfectly. You know, the Astroneer characters have funny little squeals when they do their different emotes and fall down and die. Oh yeah, see, she's pointing, so it goes woo. And then if we do a dance, um, let me find a good one. Yeah. See? Woo! Woo! And it's supposed to be, you know, like the MJ dance. He's doing the, the moonwalk and stuff. And then does the woo! So you get my point. Now let me go ahead and just mute my mic here and I'm going to turn up the game audio for a moment. We can just take in some of this music. Now, maybe not the best example of the music, but you get the idea. It's it's really cool. It fits the game really well. And there's also some really other solid sound effects. One of my girlfriend's favorite things to do here is hit the horns. Why don't you go ahead and show them? Yeah. This is a large starship horn that we found. So the truck horn we can make. I think this thing we have to find it, right? Like, I haven't been able to find it anywhere in the crafting magazine. But you get the point. There's all kinds of cool, funny little sounds. Uh, it melds really well with the game. It adds to kind of the space exploration theme. The music is really good. So Astroneer gets a solid five burgers out of five when it comes to audio for me. Now the last general game topic that I like to cover for Astroneer is overall atmosphere. Astroneer, once again, gets an easy five burgers out of five when it comes to atmosphere for me. So if we combine a few of the previously mentioned topics we end up with a cute, but at times slightly dark to be honest, game that, you know, it's deceivingly more deep and complex than it appears to be on the surface level. The game has so much atmosphere and potential for immersion, I didn't have to think twice about giving it a 5 out of 5. The music syncs up perfectly, the audio is really nice, visually stunning, they capture the sense of space exploration extremely well. There's just so much atmosphere in this game. I highly recommend it if you're trying to get a game with a sense of immersion. If you just got a new monitor, a new sound system, upgraded your GPU and your CPU, whatever it may be, and you're looking for a game to really enjoy, really get into, really get immersed in, 
this definitely is a great option for you. Astroneer gets an easy five burgers out of five when it comes to atmosphere from me. Now, I just wanna give you a minor spoiler warning for this next part. We're gonna get into some more title and genre specific categories now. So the first thing that I wanna talk about in this part is gonna be the story. Astroneer's storyline gets a middle ground three out of five from me. It does actually have a bit of a storyline, but it's relatively vague and it is open for interpretation. So again, spoiler warning here, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the core here. And we can use this as a teleporter to get around the solar system and all kinds of cool stuff. And you have to unlock that as you go throughout the story. You discover all these really cool places. I mean, look at this. This is like this is a major part of the story, so which is why I gave you guys multiple spoiler warnings. Um, but I mean, look at this. It's it's really cool. It's really beautiful, but it's not really detailed. There's no real description of what's happening and of what the story is. You just kind of discover these open-ended, mysterious places, which maybe that's awesome. Maybe that works extremely well for some people, but. It doesn't have, you know, you're not going to get like a Divinity Original Sin 2 level of narrative here. It's it's pretty quite simplistic, but it's actually definitely there. There's definitely room for more story to be added down the road, and they're still working on the game, so maybe we'll see more of a storyline as things continue. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it did kind of feel like there was room for more to go on when you get kind of to the end of the quote-unquote story. So we'll see if they implement it more. So once again, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 because it doesn't have a really complicated, complex, in-depth, captivating narrative, but it does have a pretty cool, mysterious, open-ended story. So that's why the storyline for Astroneer gets a 3 burgers out of 5 for me. The next more title or genre specific category that I want to talk about for Astroneer is the combat and the crafting systems. Now I give these two systems combined each a 4 burgers out of 5. So there really isn't much of a combat system in Astroneer. It's mostly just using your terrain tool here to unearth plants and avoid the projectiles or avoid stepping on them so that they launch you into the air like so. So you can still die from the hostile plants and death can be really frustrating, so do be careful. Um, the system itself is very easy to learn though. You see the plant, you know it's bad, you unearth it, it pops, there you go, you're done, you're safe. It drops seeds and research items that you can use in order to uh, you know, research or plant a garden like we were doing earlier. So the combat system is very straightforward. It's easy to learn. It's not too difficult. That's why it gets a four out of five for me. Now talking a little bit more about the crafting system. If you don't mind the unique UI, uh, Astroneer has an amazingly well done crafting system actually. Recipes are never too complex. Uh, it's never too hard to find what you need, but it's also not so easy that it's boring. And crafting progression is solid. It's a lot of like, you just run around at first, you find the resource that you need. Early on, you just dig it up out of the ground with your terrain tool, and then you bring it back and craft. So let's see if we can find some basic resources here, so I can give you guys a, an example. Uh, down here we have some compound, which is one of the most basic resources. You use your terrain tool, you unearth it. Over here we have some resin, do the same thing until you get a little stack of each. And we can practice our combat in the meantime and kill the plant. And once you have these things, you got a little backpack printer, and you can make things with said printer. Uh, let's scroll over to, what can we see here? What can we make? Probably tethers, yeah. So uh, you could make a small printer, for example. That's one of the starting things. So you make the little small printer, and you're already on your way to crafting. Then you can put the small printer down. The small printer then in turn can make more things. Now let's go ahead and leave that bad boy there because it's not important. And I want to talk about one more thing here as far as the crafting and combat systems go. And the main reason why I do not give the crafting system an Astroneer a 5 out of 5 is because of this. Please, for the love of God, add a grid option in the printers. This is ridiculous. This is such a good crafting system. But look at this. If I open up the printer, look at how many recipes are there. That's probably like 30, 40 recipes. I'm not going to count them all. And I have to scroll through each one every time that I want to find the specific thing that I want. I'm starting to get a, a kind of vibe for where things are, but that's the small printer alone. The large printer doesn't have as much stuff in it. The medium printer has a ton, small printer has the most, and even the printer in your backpack has a ton. So 
they really need to add a grid option for the printers. Having to scroll between every module and every structure every time that I want to find or something in order to get the specific thing that I want, it's ridiculous. This is an easy fix. It's a necessary fix. It's the main thing from stopping me from giving it, you know, a five out of five. So that is why Astroneer's combat and crafting systems for me get four burgers out of five. The next category that I'd like to touch up on for Astroneer is multiplayer. Now, Astroneer's multiplayer gets four burgers out of five for me. In fact, I've played almost entirely multiplayer. I don't know if you've noticed by now, but we've got another Astroneer over here running around. That's actually my girlfriend playing with us, and we bought this game to play together. So we're going to go ahead and hop into the rover here and show you guys a little bit of what we can do. It's absolutely excellent with multiplayer. It becomes more, much more fun. That being said, it is known to be a little bit buggy in multiplayer. Things can go wrong. Occasionally, we have had a few items disappear, and we've had deaths result from desync issues. That might have also been an issue with our, our internet connection, um, or the ethernet connection to a specific computer. But it's there. It did happen to us. So that's something to keep in mind for multiplayer. The multiplayer does make it a lot more fun. It does add new aspects to the game. It gives you something to show off your cool creations to. You can make these big rovers and put multiple seats on them like that. See, and we were both driving around together. And also, it allows you to kind of hone in on the specific aspects of the game that you like. So, for example, my girlfriend really liked the exploration. So she would always go out and get the research items. And I almost never had to worry about getting research items and getting bites because she had gotten so many for us. We're just overflowing with them, and we unlocked everything in the catalog pretty quickly. And I was able to focus a lot more on the crafting and the organization and things like that, which, ironically, I actually tend to enjoy. So it worked out really great. So multiplayer... I would give it a 5 out of 5, but because of those potential issues, the desync issues that we had, the items disappearing, and looking up online that this was a known multiplayer issue, it wasn't specific to me, it's multiplayer is known to be a little bit buggy, I cannot give it a solid 5 out of 5. That's why Astroneer's multiplayer gets 4 burgers out of 5 for me. The next topic that I want to cover for Astroneer, very briefly, is community. Now, I can't really give Astroneer's community a solid rating because I haven't interacted with them too much yet, but so far, they seem pretty friendly. Uh, I've made a few posts on Reddit and I've watched a few videos. I've gotten a pretty positive vibe overall. But like I said, I can't give it a solid rating yet, which is why I would give it a question mark burgers out of five. Maybe I'll give it a more solid rating once I interact with the community a little bit more, and I'm definitely leaning more towards the higher end of a rating when it comes to community. Now we're getting towards the end of the review here, but there's a few real important things that I still want to touch up upon. One of those things is load and queue times. Now there are no queue times. This isn't World of Warcraft. You're not going to be sitting in battleground queues for an hour, right? But there are load times. The load times are not very bad. You can see I was very quickly able to load into my game there. Load times are actually really short if you're on an SSD. Um, you can generally boot up, boot up and load into the game within a matter of seconds, like we see here. However, you're always going to be limited by your hardware. So if you're running the game on an HDD, obviously, it's going to load in a little bit slower, right? As would be expected. So that's why uh, load times for me seem actually pretty good. And I give the average load times for Astroneer a solid five burgers out of five. The next topic that I'd like to briefly touch up upon is the progression and grindiness system and feel in Astroneer. So I give Astroneer's progression system and the vibe of its grindiness a solid four burgers out of five. Progression feels very good in this game. It almost never feels too grindy. We can see that we've got this catalog here and there's all kinds of things that you can unlock. My only unreal issue is that after you've unlocked everything in the catalog, which is relatively easy to do, as you can see, we've already done that just here, there really isn't much else to discover crafting wise. Now, once again, I did have my girlfriend getting all the research items, so she was able to get us a bunch of bites, which made it much easier for me to unlock everything. So I was kind of spoiled in that aspect. If you're playing solo, it might take you a little bit longer. But that being said, it still feels really good. It just feels like they could add more. Also, this will likely be fixed with new content. The automation update, the vehicle updates, these added some really cool stuff. Like, we weren't able to have these, cover these hoverboards before, and that's a new crafting recipe. That's more progression. That's more quests that you have to do. But once you've finished all those quests, once you've finished unlocking everything, you're kind of left with that empty feeling at the end of, like you have at the end of Valheim where there's nothing much left for you to do. Of course, it's not as bad as Valheim because there's a lot of endgame options here, as I mentioned in the replayability section. We've got automation, we've got more exploration, we've got all kinds of stuff that we can do. So these are the reasons that I give Astroneer's 
progression system and the feeling of its grindiness a solid four burgers out of five humor astroneer gets a solid five out of five when it comes to humor for me that's five burgers out of five I'm giving this a 5 out of 5 because this game has literally made me burst out laughing multiple times. It's generally because of some goofy interaction that you can do that's a result of the physics system, such as being able to attach a giant platform to yourself via this winch here, and then you can speed around on your hoverboard. Definitely check out Let's Game It Out's video who kind of gave me this idea, but regardless, I went a little further with it with the hoverboard because that was introduced after he made the video, and I found out that you can zoom around on your hoverboard while carrying things. You can have it winched onto you, you can chuck it in the air and then zoom around and it should just... Yep, there we go. Here it goes. Okay, cool. <laughs> now this one's a little harder. Oh, there we go. There it is. <laughs> I was doing it with a smaller platform before and it seemed to fling around a lot more. Um, but the extra large platform, I thought it would be funnier, but it doesn't seem to quite have as much uh, fling ability here. So what if we take this bad boy back over here? And we put it back onto a different platform like that one. I love the winch's little uh, description. An experiment that went horribly wrong or right. And then it has one of those old school emoticon faces. Alright, so we unlock that, which is done. We chuck it up in the air. And we just zoom around. There we go. Now we're, now we're cooking with fuel. Alright. This is, this is just hilarious the first time that I saw it. And this isn't the only funny interaction that you can get through the physics system in this game. Somebody posted something on Reddit the other day of a rover that they just had as a perpetual motion machine flying through the air permanent, permanently because of something that they'd done by winching it to itself. There's all kinds of weird and funny things you can do in this game, mostly involving the physics system, specifically mostly involving this winch. This is why I easily give Astroneer's humor a solid five burgers out of five. Coming to a close here, I just want to once again go over my overall review and rating of Astroneer. I give Astroneer overall four burgers out of five. I'm extremely fond of this game. Uh, I've been having an absolute blast playing it with my girlfriend. No pun intended, blast it. But we've already sunk over 70 hours into it, and I've, I've almost never felt bored or unsatisfied with the game, but I can see that since we're kind of getting to the end here that I may feel that way soon. That being said, in those 70 hours, I have not felt bored. I have not felt unsatisfied. I've always had a good time. And as I mentioned, there's always room for more improvement. They're always adding more stuff. But this game is easily worth the money, and I would highly, highly recommend giving it a try. So Astroneer, for me, gets a solid four burgers out of five. Keep your eyes peeled for the next review, guys. Thanks, and have a good night.